Hello, welcome to Physics, a show that is all about physics. Today, we talk about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect occurs when waves are coupled with velocity. It was discovered by Christian Doppler, an Austrian physicist. I knew he was gone yet. You are listening to tjb.co.uk <clears throat> Hello everyone. Um, it's late and I'm in world experiencing the Doppler effect. you actually can do if you um, basically it's a simulated Doppler effect if you fly and change directions the pitch of the flying sound changes <coughs> um, but I'm, I'm not really here to talk about physics no I wanted to talk about um, something else and um don't quite know how to start this. Um let me start off by saying I'm a I'm a backer. I'm I'm a, a member of Kiva. Kiva is this online website where um people from developing countries can ask for a small credit, micro credits, and people Regular people can lend the money. You you don't get any any investment return or anything. You you know, you know you just get your money back with over time. But you help these people um, living their lives and paying for whatever they need to pay for at the moment. And um, I think it's a it's a wonderful project and it's very successful. It's so successful actually that Kiva not only lends money to people in in, in developing countries anymore, but also to people in the United, in the United States, um, which either says a lot about the United States or about Kiva. You pick. Um, what I really like about this is n not that it allows me to show off my great uh, uh, charity mindedness um, but that it um, I like the concept I like the concept of uh, sharing or, or distributing um, responsibility on the shoulders of the many um, so that um, <coughs> large group of people each of them contributing small or very small almost insignificant amounts can still lead to a lot of good so this sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with us at all but um, then again on Kickstarter uh, Double Fine Adventure we just got uh, funded or raised funding uh, of more than three million three hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars due to the same concept um, Kickstarter is uh, a website where people can uh, basically post their project what they want to do and ask for money and in return you get different uh, gifts uh, mainly the product itself and or collectible items special teasers something uh, on top of that depending on wh how whatever you you pay I, l I love the concept so much that I am um, I'm very enthusiastic about um, both Kiva and Kickstarter I'm, I'm I'm pretty um, I've just backed a lot of projects on both platforms let me go to Kiva 
and Kickstarter. <coughs> Kiva is on kiva.org. Um where they, you know, on the front page just display all these people and whatever it is they need money for. And um, Kickstarter is on kickstarter.com with the same thing. They display all these people's projects and what they need money for. Um, currently, Hotbed is Wasteland 2, which is um, <coughs> bound to get just as big as as Double Fine Adventure. It's been running for not even a week, and already raised almost 1.4 million dollars. Um, the original goal was 900,000, um, which they reached in less than two days, and this was the the largest. Um, goal on Kickstarter so far. Um, it it proves a few points, this this thing. It proves a few points, which leads me to what I actually wanted to talk about today, and that is copyright. See, <coughs> I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm in two minds about copyright. Not because I haven't mind up, made up my mind yet, but because I am living in a world where this um, made up mind of your of mine is not the one thing you want to um, be known for. Because I I don't I I am against copyright. I'm against copyright in in any form. Um, not for really not for ideological reasons um because i i don't i don't buy into ideologies too much but for very personal reasons um i always experienced the act of being creative as something that is a gift that um, it feels like to me it feels like when I create something this thing I created is not really mine because it, it came to me just out of, of it, out of its own volition I, I did not do anything to co make it come about so it very, very much feels on a personal level like it is a gift from the gods. And I know that sounds so corny, I'm afraid to say it even. But that's how it feels. I'm I'm sorry. This is just I can't I can't uh, find any other uh, see even drove off the track there. Can't find any other way to say it. So, this thing that I have, you know, been given myself, I cannot claim any rights to, because it's not mine. It's, it's a gift, and I'm just the... I'm basically the postman. I'm, I'm the one who delivers the gift. But that doesn't make it any more mine. So... I do not think anyone should ever claim ownership to anything created. <coughs> now I know that this is not a, a popular opinion and it's not one that you want to um, work with. Um, I mean it's not something that it is in such a big contrast and conflict with the current international laws and uh, about copyright that I cannot possibly <coughs> um, 
just act on it and, and, and ignore all the laws. So the second mind of me tells me that, yeah, we have copyright laws and uh, being the law-abiding citizen that I am, I have to have to play by the rules somehow. So I'm trying to bend the rules whenever ever I can and try to get this spirit um, of copyright as I see it, or, or of the lack of copyright as I see it, into the system as far as I can. Um, And still try to uphold the law uh, so I don't jeopardize the whole endeavor. So basically for me, the, the, lo the, the rule that I set for myself is that publicly, with things I publish, I respect copyright. Um, I respect the, the right of anyone to any, to any of their creations. I will not, if, if, if the if I don't have any rights to their creation, then I will not use it. I will not build on it, and I will not publish or republish any of them. Um, which basically leads me to to a point where I have to, you know, consequentially say that I, whenever I do something, I will, I will use um, publicly licensed material because that is that which comes closest to my own ideology. Can I call it ideology? I don't know. But when it comes to private things, to things that I do just for myself, frankly I don't give a damn about anyone's copyright. And um, do just whatever I, I please. Um, we are currently on TG Grid. TG Grid is a a grid that is dedicated to racing. <coughs> and um, in addition to this very fine racing course, let me zoom out on a racing course. They also hand out um, this little green racer thing car that I'm sitting in, which is an interesting concept because it is a fly car, <coughs> which means you attach it to yourself, and the scripts are made so that it will. Uh, make you uh, will put you into this sitting pose. Um, the car is rotated around your avatar so it looks like it's on the floor. And it uses the avatar's physics, the avatar's movement itself, to calculate the physics of the car. And, you know, I'm actually flying in this thing. I mean, I can go up and uh, down. Um, and if I land, I kind of sink into the ground, which is probably not the desired effect. So this is very interesting. Um, I'm mentioning the, this because I have put a monthly challenge on Open Sim Creations <coughs> um, about vehicles, and there are s a lot of different ways you can make a vehicle uh, or an, an object in world behave like a vehicle. This is just one of them. It's actually one of the <coughs> um, less um, used uh, less used uh, mo models or less used uh, approaches to, to it because, you know, uh, flying up and down. Um, Mainly, vehicles are physical objects that are scripted in a certain way so they will behave like vehicles do. And um, so, this 
since uh, let me detach this and show you what I mean. Um Since the uh, Open Dynamics engine, which is the basically the physics engine of OpenSim, <coughs> doesn't really um, work too well with drivable vehicles, most of the vehicles you will find are non-physical objects that are scripted so that they will behave or move basically I'll, um, whenever you sit on them and act on your um, keyboard uh, directional keys or it will use the avatar's own movement for their well driving um, but there is a great Um, package made by Nebadon, who is the admin of Osgrid. It's the, it's his racer kit. It's on his website called nebadon2025.com, um, where you can download a free IAR containing several different vehicles. Um, all are scripted to drive. And um, the bigger ones you see down here, the more advanced ones, actually do not are not physical. At least I think they're not. I'm not 100% sure. But the others, I think, are. And uh, they actually work pretty well. Um, surprisingly well. Um... Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. You have to find a good spot for it to, so that you will still see where you are going to. Oh man. Let me try it again. This is basically physics behaving the way they are supposed to behave. Or mainly are supposed to behave. This whole racing uh, circuit is um, on a mega region I think it's a 4 by 4 mega region so you you know don't have to worry about region crossings um, and it runs really smooth I remember Nebadon had a even bigger racing track on Osgrid at one point I was there earlier and I couldn't find it anymore maybe I'm just looking in the right pl right spot I think it was called a death race or something. <coughs> Which was a, I think an, a 4x4 four four mega region, so 16 regions. Um, of sculpted terrain. It looked really nice and, and worked really, really well. And you can, you could just it was mainly an off-road racing track it was it was real fun I, I hope it's still there or will come back anytime soon 
So we are at physic. There we are with, with physics again. For some reason, I'm not working well anymore. And that is the reason why I enjoy OpenSim so much, really, because. this spirit of um, sharing creativity with the world is really very much alive in that community more than in any community I've been part of before so um, I'm very happy with it um and i'm I'm always <clears throat> I'm always weirded out by people in in certain grids who are acting like there is no you know the the whole economy is gonna die whenever copyright isn't obeyed um, <clears throat> I don't think the con the economy is gonna die I don't th even think anything is gonna die I think frankly I don't think anything is going to change if we don't have copyright anymore because the point is not that copyright makes people pay it's basically that people really want to pay for things they can get and want you to create cool stuff so that they can enjoy it and are willing to pay for this uh, which proves my point about kickstarter you are paying for something that you that that you haven't that you are not receiving right away in fact for something that hasn't even cre been created yet you don't even know what it's gonna be exactly and still you are paying these people because you trust in them and you want them to create amazing things and share them with you and your contrib contribution and um, and frankly I believe this is this is going to change an awful lot um, this is going to change almost everything about the, the the publisher model and a lot about the way um, creators and fans get together and um, and enjoy creativity because it's not it's really not about the thing that is being made the game the painting the the project the movie the book but it is about the the one person or group of persons who want to make this and um, the other group of pre persons who want to see it being made and um, sites like Kickstarter bring both groups together and uh, basically help them achieve their goal um, I think this is gonna be huge it's gonna be it, you could apply that model to a lot <clears throat> of other things and um, and it would work I mean I bought shoes on Kickstarter that I I, I don't know if they fit they, they haven't even been made yet Be just because I loved these shoes um, It could 
I, I think the possibilities are endless and it, it would get rid of this annoying chain of command that needs to be obeyed currently until a creation finds its way into to to you the the one who wants to to have it um so i'm i'm actually in good spirits that uh in the near future a lot of things are going to change in regards to copyright and uh, probably for the better, I mean from my point of view, for the better for a lot of other people it's going to be for their perceived worse and uh, if you're a publisher then it is for your actual worse and um, if anyone is listening who is thinking about becoming a publisher uh, I don't think you should pursue that particular uh, career just now. Uh, I think there is more value in, in other places. <clears throat> I think that's for today. Nothing interesting happened. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, see you. <laughs>